would you watch the State of the Union when you could be watching The Road to 40? Because this is pre-recorded? So, watch another one. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to The Road to 40. Uh, I'm Jason Oliveira. This is my nightly vlog for at least the next 41 days where I talk about all kinds of crazy shit, folks. Uh, sometimes not so crazy. I have uh, a question came to me via Facebook uh, after I had already stopped recording last night or just towards the end of recording last night uh, by a friend of mine and uh, occasional listener watcher, uh, Desiree Castro. She uh, asked the following, at what age should I reach my prime? All right, this is a, a double-edged sword right here. Um... I almost want to say a certain age. Like, when I think about myself and, like, my pinnacles of success, I, I guess your prime is the best you're going to be in your life. I guess that's what prime refers to. Um, if that is the, the proper terminology and defining of said terminology, then if you're asking yourself that, you haven't gotten there yet, which I think is a beautiful thing. To continue to ask yourself, when am I going to reach my prime, means that you are still striving to be the best person you can, to a certain degree. Sure, you have your ruts, you have your little uh, speed bumps that send you off course, and, and you get lost, and you got to look it up in your GPS to figure out where you are again, but that's awesome. And it's a beautiful thing to, to, to not even realize, I think, that you said that. I think, personally, Desi, I think... You haven't reached your prime yet, whatever that prime may be for you. For me, I am well beyond my prime, probably. <laughs> I've seen better days. <laughs> but life is still a beautiful thing. Just because you reach your prime in your life doesn't mean that that's the end of life. I think it's just, uh, you know, set a new goal for yourself. Maybe there's a new prime out there. Optimus Prime. <laughs> But I thought that was a great question, because at first I read it, and I thought, it, I took it more of as a joke than anything else, and I'm sure it was intended partially to be that, but I think that's a great thing about that interactivity. I, I had a feeling going into this that uh, an opportunity was going to present itself based solely on that question and the State of the Union, which is just starting right now. Uh, I could watch it live, and we could comment on it, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do this, because you're that important. I had a brief conversation with uh, Brady, uh, Rick Brady, um, about Mario. Um, I don't know how it came up. It was it was last night's question for questions. It was saying, hey, anybody got any questions for me on the road to 40 tonight? Well, at some point he said, I'd love to see Mario on the show. Mario, if you go back, watch St. Mario. It's an old, old episode, but it's all about a drummer I played with for 10 years and one of the best friends I've ever had. Just a wonderful person all around. Well, he said he'd be willing to make a road trip with Mario down here. So I am keeping my fingers crossed that at some point it would be nice if it was around my birthday. Um, <laughs> it would be nice to see them come down. Um, Rick Brady, I never got to become really close friends with. He was always on the outskirts of like my friendship with Mario. It, you know, you have friends like that. So... With any luck, you might actually get to meet St. Mario if you don't know who he is. Um, and I think it would be really cool. I think a conversation with Mario would be one of the best videos I could do. Uh, outside of a nightly vlog with like my friend Corey, I think having Mario on the show, we could literally just talk for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Uh, maybe not every time we got together, but enough to do a whole week-long segment of The Road to 40. I like those. That was fun with Nick and Chris last time, and I'd like to do maybe one more, two more. Like I said, uh, my friend Alexander, I'm really hoping he has time to come by and, and do one of these one night, because I think you guys would, would dig him. He's an interesting cat, very talented guy. Uh, oh, take a look at this picture. Hopefully I remember to insert it here. This is some of the art that I've been talking about that I see all around town. I want to make a habit from this day forth when I see them to actually stop, pull over to the nearest parking lot and walk back and take a picture of the art because it gets covered up quite frequently. Like uh, They often get painted over relatively quickly. And the newest one was really cool. I love the fact that it's got Nosferatu and it says 
never stop studying science or I, I, I actually don't have it in front of me right now but or keep studying science like science 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 and technology for you and me all throughout the galaxy science science and technology yeah bitches Good God. How about the X-Files coming back? Um, Carol and I watched all nine seasons in a row, long after it had been off the air. And it was pretty cool to watch nine, ten, eleven. I can't remember how many seasons. I thought there was nine. Um, but I think I was wrong about that. I might be wrong about that. Um, I think it'd be great to see, especially Dave Duchovny and, uh, what's her name? Jill Jillian Anderson? Uh, come back and reprise their roles. Otherwise, I mean, they could still do a great X-Files show without them, I think. There's a lot of, you know, new actors and actresses that could step into, maybe not their role, but, you know, their position. They could make cameos and so on and so forth. But I'd really love to see the original cast, um, back um, for a few seasons. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> I had asked my friend Paul. He had taken a picture of himself, if I remember. Uh, he must have gotten a new... If you remember the... Not Joe Satriani. The late 80s, early 90s uh, brought about this guitar revolution. Probably more mid to late 80s. And you got like guys like Steve Vai. Steve Vai. Joe Satriani, uh, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, uh, all those guys that were just guitar gods that went out there and just ripped solos and was so fast and just did all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, he's holding one of the the guitars that I think it's one of the um, Steve Vai guitars, and it's only got six strings. And I remember he had had a seventh string added to some of his models, uh, and he said, nah, none of that garbage, <laughs> which I agree with. I mean, there's no need for a seven string on a guitar, but that being said, it would be kind of neat to mess around with one, you know what I mean? Like, um, like when, when an instrument comes across that you've never played before, but it's in your vein, like, um, for example, I play guitar. I've been playing guitar for... 24, 25 years now. Um, I'm not necessarily a bass player, but I can play bass. If a band needed a bass player to fill in, I may not be the best choice, but I could certainly play, and I could play pretty well. Um, mandolin. I have picked up a mandolin, and like within you know an hour's time, been writing stuff on it, or 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 uh, um, taking parts from songs that I've written and trying to figure out how to play them on the mandolin or just add them with mandolin. So when it comes to strings and in instruments, I'm not the best there is. Mind you, all my friends are probably better musicians and guitarists than I am. But I'm good enough that when a stringed instrument comes my way, I'm like, oh shit, I need to play that. Like I played a, um, it was half banjo, half, not mandolin. It's a six string banjo on a steel string, uh, you know the the bot, the steel body guitars? It was one of those, and it was awesome, and it sounded really cool, and it was really fun to play. Um, I wish I had the resources to build a studio. Not a big studio, but a studio where I could go in and record and play with instruments and have a drum set in there. I've always felt like if I just had six months with a drum set, I'd be a pretty decent drummer. I mean, not nothing amazing, don't get me wrong, but I could get into it. Like, every time someone has left a drum set at my house, of course I'm going to play it, and I play the shit out of it. I play it, play it, play it, play it. And, I mean, yes, I can keep a steady 4-4 four, four beat. <laughs> I can throw a fill in there, you know what I mean? That's about all I can do. But I would love to have a studio where just all these instruments, that is a be that's not asking too much out of life, I don't think. When you start asking for three yachts, or at least a second yacht, and, and multiple mansions around the, the world, sure, you want to have some houses around the world. That's cool. I can understand that. As long as you're giving something back, too. But asking for a studio with, you know, maybe 30 to 40 instruments in it, I think that as an artist, that's not 
going into the realm of being greedy. I think it's uh, if you're an artist and you create, I mean, that studio could double as a paint studio. You could do so much. Like, I would love to have a studio with just tons of equipment and art supplies. And I'd like to just go out there with the kids and go crazy. Not like I can't do that here. And I do do that here. Do do. <laughs> as much as I can. But I also don't have the ability to right now crank up an amp like a Marshall stack up to 11, you know what I mean? And just go to town. I'd need some kind of soundproof environment to do that. Even acoustic right now I can't really play because I'll probably wake up one of my kids. And then... throw it out to you Pacock. <laughs> it made me think of Matthew Silver for some reason uh, he continues to entertain and make me smile so he's doing his job properly at least for me um, well if I get any more questions I'll come back tonight I just wanted to answer that for uh, Desiree I think if you're asking it you haven't reached your prime yet how will you know I don't know I don't think you'll know until afterwards, which is the saddest part about being in your prime. Because you think, well, this is just life. This is how life goes. I'm not saying that the prime of my life was my 20s or anything like that. I still think that I am hopefully waiting for the prime of my life. Hopefully things just keep getting better. Because they do. They have. Um, but if I had to say at one point in my life, there was a time where I felt like I was the king of the world. Like I was at the top of my game. When it comes to like uh, being an entertainer, or I know that's silly to call myself that, but that's how I feel. I feel like I had the ability to entertain people, and I don't do it as well as I did when I was in my twenties. Um, if I'm if I'm measuring my success, pointing towards you know my prime, then yes, I'd say about twenty one, twenty two. <laughs> as far as a person, I'm hoping the, that road is far beyond me, and I just keep escalating and getting closer and closer to it and just keep getting better and better it's all you can really hope for these days man anywho if you're loving watching these as much as i'm loving making them please subscribe and pass them along to anybody who you might know who might like watching them as well uh you know follow me on the social media uh i know those links don't work i never put them down below but if you go check other videos i'll try to put them in like some about me or something like that so they'll always be there Feel free, it's always G-E-Y-C-E-N. Please don't forget to make somebody smile tomorrow. Make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today, tomorrow. Let's make the world spin a little bit happier together. Let's sing and dance in the rain, my brothers and sisters, as one. Live life to the fullest and love every moment of it, because you just never know when that last moment's going to come. And I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to make you aware. <laughs> Life can be short for some people. I read some horrible stories sometimes, and I hate reading them. And I usually don't intend to read them, but I find myself starting to read it, and then I get to the terrible point, and I regret ever starting it. Thank you guys for always coming back. It means the world to me. It really does. Uh, we're winding down here, but we got future shows. So you're not going to get rid of this ugly mug that quickly. Um, take care of yourselves. Take care of one another, and take care of those around you who can't take care of themselves. Or do your best to. I mean, I'm not saying kill yourself to do it. If you can, great. <laughs> I'm Jason Oliver. This is Dr. Carl Mitch, and he's my co-host. He's a doctor. He's an MC. He does all kinds of shit. He's crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, he's, he's that crazy, too. Uh, I'll see you guys a little bit further on down the road to 40. Take care.